as we've now reached the hundredth corral a day of this uh, little lockdown coronavirus project of mine, um, I thought this would be a opportune moment to just share with you a little bit more about what exactly this peculiar instrument I've been playing for the last hundred days is, and also why I've been playing Bach chorales on it. Now, this instrument was made for me a few years ago by the Swiss makers Egger, and it's the result of some very interesting research by um, Egger's firm and colleagues of mine, in particular the horn player Olivier Picard. And it's, to my mind, a very elegant solution to a bit of a problem us Baroque horn players have with approximately 30 or so Bach cantatas. The problem is this. In 1723, when Bach first arrives in Leipzig, he writes three cantatas where he specifically asks for an instrument he calls the corno de terrasi. These cantatas are cantata 46, 68 and 162, but we can also identify about roughly 30 others that fit into the same characteristics as the three that Bach specifically asks for. So corno de terrasi, which we can literally translate to de terrasi as pull, to pull, so uh, some sort of slide horn. We have um, a number of other slide brass instruments from the time, such as, of course, the trombone, but also Bach writes for the tromba de terrasi. And these parts are very different to a standard Baroque horn part of the period. For most of Bach's works for horns, us horn players, we hunt in pairs. There's normally two of us. Um, the great exception being, of course, the Bach Mass in B minor and the Quaniam obligato from that. We're normally either in the key of D, F or G. Um, and these Tarasi parts are very different. It's one horn player on their own. The parts are very high. Um, and they're normally either in A or B flat, though the parts are read in concert pitch. Probably part of the reason we're reading in concert pitch is often these parts we're doubling the soprano line of the choir. But no instrument appears to have survived. We have not been able to identify something that we could call the corno de terrasi. And there's also no uh, pictures or instrument makers advertising that they could provide uh, a player with one of these instruments. So we've had to be quite imaginative in order to come up with a solution. The parts to these chorales really don't work nicely on the Baroque horn, uh, partially because of the tessitura, partially because they're so high, um, but also because they stray very much outside of the harmonic series. They're very chromatic parts quite often. So what has happened here is this instrument I have in my hands here. Um, any Leipzig maker of the 1720s would recognise the parts of this instrument. Um, if I take it apart, um, this bit here, um, this is an instrument that Egger had been making for quite a while, which is based on the portrait, the Hausmann portrait of Bach's trumpet player Gottfried Reicher. Um, so that's recognisable from that, and also they've based it on, I think, a Hass instrument from um, a collection, the Trumpet Museum collection. Um, plus, on the back, I have this slide. Now, for me as a horn player, this is a great new adventure, <laughs> uh, a new, a new technique technique to add to our repertoire. Um, so the slide is put on the back here and that puts me into B flat. But if I take, um, I have here this little pigtail crook, and this crook I can insert between the body and the slide, and that puts me in A. So that gets round having to play in B flat and A. Um, and so, yeah, I put the slide in at the back here. <laughs> So you have the harmonic series of B-flat, recognisable to natural trumpet players and natural horn players alike. 
I, I never have to go down to that harmonic. But then... That's the explanation as to what this Corno de Terrassi is. I must say, I think it's a really super elegant solution to this conundrum. I like I like the fact that it's utilising instruments and techniques that uh, would have been familiar at the time. And I've had the opportunity to play it several times in uh, Bach cantatas, which call for this instrument. And it's it's... A sweet instrument, um, not not in the sense of cute, but it's it's got a sweet timbre. It's not quite as bright or shrill as one might expect from such a little horn. And as I say, it's it's a super uh, solution for this problem of this mysterious instrument that appears not to have survived. And I often find that one of the glorious things about playing it is just how especially when you're doubling the vocal soprano line it just you kind of underpin the choir and just give this sort of shimmering effect to the sound so yeah a hundred of the corner uh, not corona chorale a day are done now um that puts me yeah a fair bit over halfway i think i worked out that there's about 165 um, so hopefully we'll be back playing in real life, but um, until then I'll keep up the chorales a day and see where it takes me.